Hey guys, I got a special little treat for you today. Going way back to 1996, I had just started college and it was time for a new sketchbook. One that was going to be with me for a full decade. And today, it's show and tell time. So here we are with one of the last remaining Dean Markley guitar string stickers. You used to see these things everywhere. They're still the only guitar strings I use. And they really need to bring back the stickers. I'm all about that. Actually, bring back stickers in general for everybody. There's not enough peeps out there expressing themselves. It's not like you meet anyone face to face anymore. If you've got a favorite band, but there's no sticker on your car, how am I supposed to know what makes your Toyota Regretta bounce like that? Hmm? Yeah. But anyway, here we go. This journal started on May 8th, 1996, back in the wonderful days when almost all my friends would gather most nights at our local diner to hang with coffee, conversation, and occasional craziness. I was usually in the back somewhere drawing, if I wasn't playing chess or magic anyway. Yes, Magic the Gathering was a thing back then, but way less cool than it is now, or well, actually I'm not sure what it is now, but... Yeah, we were all musicians, artists, misfits, and criminals anyway, so we didn't much care what anyone thought. But still, here we go. I'm going to do my best whenever possible to give you details of stuff that's too tiny or cleaned up versions of the few things that sadly have not fared too well over time. So, yeah, you'll get a lot of that along the way. And here's Pickle Slug! Just to torture my best bud Joey, who hates them, I'd take my pickle and two fancy frill picks from my turkey club and make them into the table mascot Pickle Slug. He really hates pickles. It's endless fun. And here we go. Matt Man from the fiery bowels of Lansdale. Behold, Matt Man. And there's really not much else to be said there. Inside, there's a lot of pages in here uh, that, that are, you know, have text all over them, but this one's got great doodles too, so yeah, I'll, I'll share that. Inside is where you go when the other kids don't want to play with you. Inside is where you stay forever. Yeah. Lots of stuff. Oh, and here's a nice poem for you. There once was a wizard who lived in a lizard, would not let his woman go free. She, mad as a blizzard, kicked him in his gizzard. And now a sad wizard is he. Yeah, some guys just never learn, you know. The space for rent. It really was all about just whatever popped into my head in the early days. <laughs> you know. And yeah. Oh, and by the way, the answer to that question is it's never safe to fill the gas tanks because cops have radios. Run on foot. You have a much better chance. And that's actually true. And here we are with some nice pen and ink stuff. You know, that was most of what I did from high school up until college. Um, mainly because that's what I could afford. You know, I, I could occasionally afford some acrylics, but usually a pen and paper was as much as my budget would allow. And I love pen and ink anyway, so it worked. Yeah, so much amazing illustration has been done with just ink on paper. But, uh, you know, I also used to paint a bunch of jean jacket backs way back in the day. And, and luckily, I had, uh, my friend Chrissy sent these to me. Thank you, Chrissy. Um, these were two that I had done for her way, way long ago. Uh, they obviously haven't held up well over time, <laughs> so try to be forgiving. The logos and stuff were definitely not that crude uh, when it was originally done, but these are these photos are, uh, I think, decades after the fact. But still, there's some wonderful little examples of, you know, my high school years. And, of course, there's always pencil. And good old-fashioned dragons. I've always loved the first guy there. We are not amused. And here's a different one that I did around the same time. That was a tattooed design that sadly never got used. But, uh, you know, it's worth looking at. Another dragon in pencil. And here we have some ramblings where I, you know, try to be positive in my own weird way with, you know, varying success but there's a really cool like bird drawing there too i like that 
scary undead. The scariest zombies I find are the ones clearly without eyes or even a brain, but also just as clearly looking right at you. That's scary undead. Also, sometimes your ribs itch weird. It happens, and you know, for the undead, they can just <laughs> reach in there and give it a good scratch. You know, sometimes I'm jealous. And now we're at the treehouse. Ah, the treehouse. One of my favorites from this era. Later on, I developed this into the cover for the Queen Killing Kings album, Tidal Eyes, which is an awesome album and fills me with pride that it's my cover on such an amazing piece of music. Incredible piano and drum-based rock, swing pop that it's very hard to classify, as you can tell, uh, but deep and unique and yeah, you need to check it out. Links in the description. And, no, well, now that's just inappropriate. Okay, so from here on, uh, this is after I transferred to Maryland Institute College of Art and moved to Baltimore. You'll notice my skills improve a lot at this point, but that's because I was doing nothing but drawing and painting all day, every day. And then there's a bunch of studies here for paintings that I never actually got around to making. You know, shame too, because I love the idea of the tree playing itself as a harp. I always wanted to do that, but maybe someday I'll get around to it, maybe. Hopefully. And more studies. Uh, but the second one there actually did get made into a painting, and here it is. I always love the post-apocalyptic thing where people use keys and computer parts and such as art because they don't remember what it actually is. That's just magical concept to me. Now a few drawings that I think might predate the sketchbook, but I had glued them in there not knowing how bad the rubber cement was going to get over time, but still, it shows how much I was into pen and ink stuff back then, and I'm including the cleaned up versions as well. I can do crazy stippling. Perfect dots from drafting pens still has a special place in my heart. And here we are with uh, more of these. Um, this is an early piece before I knew you should sketch out the forms before you start inking in the dots. Lesson learned, this man has no neck. And some old doodles in ballpoint pen. If you learn to get the feeling and pressure just right, you can actually achieve a good range of lines from ballpoint pens. They're much easier to work with than you would think. And more ballpoint pen doodles, saved from other old sketchbooks. Uh, freeform doodling is highly recommended. It's a great form of therapy. It's wonderful stress relief and can teach you things about yourself you might be surprised by. And here's my drinking buddy. Please forgive the horrible discoloring from the old rubber cement. <laughs> but here's the, uh, the colored version, so that, that helps a bit. I did this ballpoint doodle sitting in the dark in the back of the Mount Royal Station building auditorium while Dave McKeon was giving an incredibly encouraging talk. In case you don't know, he's the guy that did all the Sandman comic book covers, a true pioneer in digital art and a super sweet guy. And it was a very happy day. Uh, and here's Angel. Uh, this one I was so nervous about losing it because of the delicate pencil work that I overdid the workable fixative and the page got all moisture damage and so here's a version without that so you can really see it. The real angels always end up going to jail in our shit world, but really for me this was all about the wings. And more pencil dragons! You could never get enough! And here we have the key. I have a huge soft spot for old keys, and I love doing stylized faces, especially big cartoony noses. I love pencil, but I hate that it only goes so dark and can be a real challenge when it comes to capturing light. But practice is what your sketchbook is for. Uh, and this one is more of a memory for me than a drawing. A low-hanging branch over a creek somewhere, leaves just touching the water rushing below. I can't remember where, but it was a gorgeous warm summer afternoon with friends by a riverside, and all that comes back to me every time I glance at this little sketch. The 
power of art. Ah, here we've got another sci-fi character, a robot this time, huddled with bullet holes and a leaf. I grew up with Matsumoto's anime, Heavy Metal Magazine, Soriyama's sexy chrome robots, and, and all that stuff. So this is just fun for me. I love drawing this kind of thing. I can draw this stuff forever. It's a serious carpal tunnel danger. Oh, and by the way, uh, you know, please excuse if I mispronounce the, uh, the names there. And this one has aged in a fascinating way. 1999 was when I did this sketch, and even then I'm commenting on how people are locking themselves inside and only communicating through wires. And the internet was brand new then. No smartphones yet. Oh, and by the way, I don't think I'm preaching here. This is as much a commentary to my own tendency to be a hermit as anyone else's. And a couple more quick sketches for paintings that never happened. Although I did do a different version of the one as a finished oil painting. Back when I was trying out shadow box Trump Loy painting. Attempting to actually fool the viewer into thinking they're real items. Doing that actually helped me realize my perfectionist tendencies were actually not helping me. Yeah, I, I'll take style over realism any day. Realism is what a camera is for. But still, major props to the peeps that can do it well. And here we have one bad day in pencil. We've all been here, at least in spirit. And here's a wonderful example of my other passion, typography. Weird sci-fi lettering is always a fun diversion. This does say something. It, it, it's kind of on an angle, but still, it does. I'm not going to tell you. Oh, and the nice pen and ink eagle there harkens back to the days when I sold Tattoo Flash. It's kind of the last little bit of that style. And more pencil doodles. Seriously, I do recommend doodling as therapy. And, oh, here's another pencil drawing from the same time period as the sketchbook. More random skulls and... Yeah. The Old Man on the Mountain Hookah. This one was done as an illustration for the arts and entertainment magazine I was the creative director of at the time called Play. Here's the color version, my happy place. Old hippie on the mountaintop, I mean, speaks for itself. And yeah, and then there's that. I miss you, Dad. Ah, the further adventures of George the ill-fated wildflower. I wrote a short story once about a wildflower named George, who went insane one horrible night and ended up crushed to death under a Buick. Here we have George being snatched up by the greedy farmer who should have left George alone because now death's picking at his naked stem. Oh no! Plus a dragon brushing his teeth. What could go wrong? One of my favorite doodles of all time. Sometimes the magic happens. I am grateful. No idea what it means, but... That's always really just up to you. And here's a drawing that perfectly sums up exactly how I feel about Walmart. Yup, that. Exactly that. And yet another dragon in pencil. This one is the original sketch for what became my full finished piece, Opium. Riding the dragon indeed. Just can't get enough of them dragons. And this lovely little thing I did the day after, the only time I got to see Tool live. And they are so incredible live. I highly recommend it. The day after, I was eating at the Athenian 2 Diner in Orange, Connecticut, and this little doodle just popped in my head. So it's at least partially Tool inspired, for sure. And here we have the Happy Halloween 2006. And this little demon girl is the last sketch in the book. 1996 to 2006. I hope you all enjoyed the trip. Thanks so much for sticking around to the end. Next time I'll be covering my new modded building system for Second Life. It'll help make building the house of your dreams as fun as playing with Legos. Honestly, that's the whole goal. Please like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon so you don't miss anything. If you're enjoying my content and would like to help out, check out my Patreon for uncut versions of this vlog and lots of exclusive goodies. Not that I really need to tell you for this one, 
But yes, everything in this video was created by me. Until next time, have a great one. Peace.